Well, folks, we've got pressurized grain jars. Remember, the first thing we gotta do when we take these out of the pressure cooker is twist the lid nice and tight. We left it a quarter turn unsealed when we put it in the pressure cooker just so all that pressure could get in there and sterilize this grain. Time to make everything nice and secure and contaminant free and get this, uh, get this mushroom journey on the road. So for each one of these, as I pull them out, I'm gonna seal them up nice and tight. Give them a turn. And that's pretty much all there is to uh, pressure cooking and sterilizing your grain in preparation for our button mushroom grow. Now this is part two of our indoor button mushroom grow project. We prepared the grain by simmering it, by turning the insides to a nice juicy consistency that our mycelium is gonna love. And today is the day that we're going to inoculate. And if you're not sure what inoculate means, it basically just means we're gonna impregnate these grain jars that we prepared with little baby mushrooms, which is called mycelium. They're gonna to get together so well that they're gonna fill this entire jar with mycelium. And at that point, we're gonna move on to the next step, which is going to be filling up those monotubs in the back and, uh, and actually starting to produce some mushrooms from this project. So in order to inoculate these grain jars, we're gonna use what's called a liquid culture. This is our button mushroom liquid culture. It says portobello on there. I went over how button mushrooms are actually cremini mushrooms as well as portobello mushrooms in the first part. So again, if you didn't see that, you gotta check it out. But this is what we're gonna actually use to inoculate or impregnate these grain jars that we prepared over here. Now that we've got our grain jars prepared and everything inside is sterilized, everything from this point forward has to be spick and span. It has to be completely, it has to be as sterile as we can possibly get it. I've already got my latex gloves strapped on, so that's gonna keep all the nasty juices from my hands from getting in all the cracks and crevices and ruining our mushroom project. We're gonna be using something called a still air box as an extra layer of precaution even. And the reason that we're taking all these precautions is because at this point, the mycelium in this liquid culture syringe it's at its most vulnerable state. And although contamination will always be an issue, it will become less of an issue as the mycelium gets stronger and, uh, and makes its way toward becoming actual mushrooms. So before we go any further, we're gonna get inside of our still air box. We're gonna wipe everything down with a mixture of bleach and water, as well as spray everything down with 70% isopropyl alcohol. This stuff is used for sterilizing pretty much everything, at least in the hobby spectrum of mycology. So. Get yourself a, a whole bunch of 70% isopropyl alcohol because you're gonna be using it to, to spray literally everything down when you're doing this type of work. Now, if you're worried about getting into mycology yourself because you don't have a still air box and all of this sort of stuff that we're playing around with here, don't worry too much about it because I'm gonna show you another method at the end of this that you can use even if you don't have a still air box. And now we'll get in with some of that magic isopropyl alcohol. Again, we're just looking to create as, uh, as sterile of a little bubble as we possibly can so that we can, uh, we can impregnate our grain jars without having any deformed and mutant babies come out of the, uh, out of the mushroom crop. But we're still not done yet because everything that we put into this still air box needs to be sanitized. The grain jars, um, the tools that we'll be using, the liquid culture. Literally everything needs to be sanitized and wiped down before it goes into the tent. Especially this little inoculation point on the, uh, on the lid of the jar. But don't worry, we're gonna sanitize that as we go as well. Also like to use the 70% isopropyl alcohol wipes uh, just because it makes everything a little bit easier than spritzing and, and scrubbing. It's already, it's already built in. And you wanna give everything a good scrub down, including and especially the, uh, the liquid culture syringe, because this is what's gonna actually be making contact with our grain jars. And now I just have to put you inside the still air box as well so we can get you the, uh, the best shot possible. And because I have to put you in the still air box, I gotta wipe you down too. And now that we've got our bubble sanitized, we can't forget about our hands and our arms and everything that's gonna be inside of the bubble. So give yourself a good spray down. Disinfect any little nasties that might be all over you. It's for the sake of the mushrooms. And when you're ready, let's pop our hands inside the still air box and get to work. Well, the first tool that we're gonna to use is a uh, sealed, already sterile um, hypodermic needle. Do you call them hypodermic? I don't know but it's a syringe needle. It's got a cap on it, so we wanna gently put it onto our syringe cap.
First, you got to remove that other thing. All right, so let's screw our syringe on there. Good. Then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the needle. Again, this is already sterile, so we don't need to wipe it down the first time, but we are going to wipe down our first inoculation point, which is going to be right here. I'm going to switch hands so I can work with my good hand. Now you might think that we're going to distribute the entire liquid culture throughout these jars. That's actually not true. I'm only going to squirt about one cc into each of these five jars. So the point is that you don't have to use the entire syringe. On little pint sized jars like this, usually one cc is plenty. This is what it's all come down to folks. This is putting the mushrooms in their grain jar, squirting that mycelium from this liquid culture down into the jar. Did I remember to shake this up? Let's give it a good shake to distribute all these little liquid chunks in here. Do you see those? Anyways, enough rambling. Let's inoculate. I'm gonna go right into the center. We're gonna press onto that. We're gonna drive it down in. We're gonna turn it and we're gonna quickly take that down to about nine cc's. We're gonna pull this out just like this. Immediately inoculate the hole. And then let's set this jar aside and bring another one in. Let's do number two. Again, wipe down the hole. Inoculate. Drive it with a CC. And pull it out. How'd we do? Did I get you a good view? Whew! Smells like alcohol in here. And then with our last jar, I'm gonna show you one more technique just in case you don't have your own sterile bubble so that you know that you can still inoculate and impregnate grain jars uh, all by yourself. It's just a little bit more risky. For this method of sterilization, we get to use the blowtorch, which is always a great time. So we're gonna wipe our hands down again, of course. And then this time, since we're using a used needle, we're going to do what's called a flame sterilization. We just need a little flame and we need to get it on that. Uh, we need to get it on that needle until it turns bright, red, hot. We want to get the whole thing hot. And basically, what this is doing, if it isn't obvious, is it's killing everything that might be living on there. And now that we've got our red hot needle, we're going to give this one more wipe down with our isopropyl alcohol wipe, and then repeat the process. Inoculate, drive about a cc, and remove. Oops. It's okay if you tip the jar over like that. It won't hurt anything. And now we've still got about five cc's of our liquid culture left. We'll put that back in the fridge. We'll save it for later. We'll save it for another project. And now all that's left to do is to put those grain jars somewhere nice and safe. And for that, what I usually like to do is just put them in their, uh, in their future monotub homes. And this is where the real practice of patience begins because now we, we put these jars away and we wait. It's going to take anywhere from eh, two to three weeks, sometimes up to a month. What's going to happen over the next few weeks is we're going to start to see little mycelium bud all over the place. There'll be little sprouts of white that almost look like little like mushroom prints start to show up in, uh, in various places on the grain jar here. For the most part, we wanna leave these grain jars alone to do their thing. But once the mycelium has taken up about 20 to 30% of this, we'll come in, we'll shake it up, we'll kind of rough it up a little bit, we'll let it know that it needs to work extra hard to fill the rest of this grain up, to fully colonize our grain jars here. And at that point, and at that point, we'll get to begin the exciting journey of building these, uh, these little button mushrooms forever home. We'll get to put together a special substrate that they're gonna love to grow on. And maybe if we're lucky one day, we'll finally get to pop one of our very own button mushrooms in our mouth. I actually don't really like raw mushrooms at all. But before I forget, there's one more thing we have to do. I almost forgot to remove our carbon fiber filter drip caps. Sometimes you gotta twist them real good. Did I mention in this video that not only did I design and create these custom carbon fiber grain jar lids and also these wicked new monotub filter covers? Ooh.